Jesus. Listen, my friends. I want you to understand tonight, as I am talking to you, let me say this. I know some of you are going to join me. I'm going to wait for my audience to build again. I'm going to wait for my audience to build again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to wait for, I'm going to literally wait for my audience to build again. Because I want you to know tonight, the devil is mad. Are you hearing me tonight? I'm going to say it again. The devil is mad tonight. Tonight I am exposing what we call occultic practices. And literally, this is the second or third time my broadcasting got interrupted. I'm going to say it again. Tonight I am talking about occultic practices. Tonight, I am talking about occultic practices. And this is the third time that my broadcasting was interrupted. I didn't touch it. I didn't do anything to it. It was interrupted. I want you to know that the devil does not want you to know his secret. We are literally disarming his kingdom. And when we are talking about occultic practices and exposing occultic practices, I want you to know that witches and warlocks are going to be upset because we're preaching this thing tonight. We're exposing the satanic kingdom. And guess what? Guess what he wants to do? He wants the number to decrease and so that people will get frustrated that they won't come back on the live broadcasting because they will say, oh, the live broadcasting has been interrupted two or three times. I can't bother with it. Let me tell you something. He don't want you to receive the secret hist uh, the mysteries and the knowledge of what goes on in the satanic kingdom. This is the third time. This is what I'm trying to tell you, my friends. Let me tell you something. The devil is not going to attack. He's not going to attack these little live broadcastings that many of you listen to because half of them are not preaching messages of this, uh, this caliber. And I'm not trying to make myself bigger than anybody else. But I want you to know when we are exposing occultic practices, when we are exposing witchcraft operation, the devil is going to interrupt with the technology. He's going to interrupt with the broadcasting because literally witches and warlocks are working through the earways so that you will not hear it. He wants you to become spiritually frustrated so that the numbers can drop and decrease so that you are not enlightened about what happens and goes on in the realm of the spirit. And this is why I'm saying when we are teaching messages of this nature, it is very serious. The devil does not want you to know things of this nature. I'm going to I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, the, uh, 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 so some of you who are joining back on, this is what I'm saying. Share the video because the enemy knows that people are going to be set free by this. Are you hearing me tonight? This is some serious stuff. And so it says the occult practice is secret hidden knowledge or wisdom for somebody who missed it. Occult. in the 19th century but it was always in biblical time and retrospect as I said in order for you to understand occultism you cannot understand it by natural reasoning argument uh, uh, understanding it's a spiritual phenomenon uh, the cross references that I gave was in Deuteronomy 18 and Leviticus 20 right and the last thing I shared is that uh, God does not want us to practice paganism and occultic practices. Now, I'm going to fast forward here for the sake of time. The occult is on the rise. And it is being practiced worldwide. Are you hearing me? And it's being practiced in the music industry, in the governmental systems. It's being practiced in the school system, in, uh, in media. And tragically, it's also being practiced even in our church. And guess what, my friends? They are technologically and spiritually advancing to infiltrate and impact as many lives as possible. And the reason why, my friends, they are so progressive, that's because 
The enemy understands the importance of time. The enemy understands the importance of time. The Bible says it like this. In Revelation chapter 12, verses 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, O ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. But woe be unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For Satan has come down with to you with great wrath, knowing that his time is short. My friends, the enemy knows that his time is short. And that is why he is redeeming his time. When Satan, my friends, was uh, evicted from the eternal realm. I'm going to teach you tonight. When the Satan was evicted from the eternal realm, he was then subjugated into time. He began to be trapped into the realm of time. Therefore, he is maximizing and uh, the use of time to accomplish his goal. Let me say that again. He was in the eternal realm. And because he was kicked out of the eternal realm, he is now subjugated uh, to time. And he is maximizing the time to accomplish his goal. And I want you to understand tonight that time wasted is an incompleted task. Please type that into your text box. Time wasted is an incompleted task. And so he uses time to utilize for satanic recruitment and dispatching. I'm going to say it again. The time that the enemy uses is for satanic recruitment and dispatching. He is recruiting people into his kingdom. And that's why you see that occultic practices is on the rise. The reason why it's on the rise is simply because Hallelujah. It's because there has been a recruitment taking place. He is seeking to increase his kingdom. And so, beloved, the Bible says it like this in John chapter 9, verses 4. It says, I must work the work of him that sent me. Hallelujah. For while it is yet day and night coming, no man can work. I want you to understand that no man can work. Hallelujah, when the night coming, and so it is imperative that uh, we begin to work. As I said before, the church is too distracted. And there is witchcraft operation and occultic practices that is even happening now in our religious organization. In our religious, religious organization. And guess what? There are many pastors, sadly to say, this is not all throughout the body of Christ. But there are many pastors and leaders and celebrities and many other people that have literally sold their souls to the devil for an ungodly exchange. Huh? They have exchanged their, their themselves, their soul, and have done that to, in, to, in, to the marine kingdom. A lot of pastors and leaders have been recruited. And into the marine kingdom, initiated into the marine kingdom for more power. I'm going to say that again. They have been recruited for more power. What am I saying to you tonight? That a lot of these individuals who you believe are so anointed. I'm talking about many of them that you see on international platforms. Or that is operated by miracle signs and wonders. They have sold their souls to their devil. Have been initiated into the marine kingdom. And because they have been initiated into the marine kingdom. Here you are. Or you say that they are so anointed. And so powerful. But you don't understand that the power is derived from the marine kingdom. The satanic kingdom. Now I want to tell you something my friends. The importance of this message that I'm teaching tonight. Many of you may not be privy to this. Number one, I'm going to tell you how I know that the devil does not want you to hear this. Number one is because this live broadcasting was interrupted three times. Not only that, on this week, as I was studying to talk about this topic tonight. On this week, while I was in church, I want to tell you. That I literally fell down a flight of stairs. <laughs> and I know it's not funny. 
but I fell down a, a flight of stairs and I injured myself. Amen. And even currently right now as I'm speaking to you, there's pain in my body as we currently speak. And that's what I'm telling you. The devil will try to attack because he does not want you to hear this message. So please, I implore you, hear with your spirit ear what God wants to expose to you tonight. A lot of pastors and leaders who you are calling anointed that are operating under false miracles, signs, wonders, prophecy. These are people that have been initiated into the marine kingdom. Into the marine kingdom. <laughs> Amen. And so, some of them are telling you uh, uh, the color shoes you have on, how much money you have in your bank account, what your name is, uh, uh, and they're going back into your history and all these things. And I want you to understand tonight, a lot of times, my friends, that's not derived from God's kingdom, but from the satanic kingdom. Amen. And so, sadly, we're thinking that this is the anointing, but it's not. And so the Bible says that you shall know them by their fruit. I'm going to skip forward. I'm going to fast forward now. Amen. And so, here's one uh, kind of occultic practice. Number one, the first occultic practice that I want to talk to you tonight is called magic. Magic. Magic is described. Thank you, one of God. Thank you, Sheila. I know I, I'm going to be well in Jesus' name. I fell down a flight of stairs, but to God be the glory. I'm not going to cease from preaching this gospel and cease from uh, exposing the satanic kingdom. So magic, what is magic? Magic is any art that invokes supernatural powers, magic trick, conjuring tricks, or, or a conjuration or illusion or deception. That's what magic is. Magic is any art invoking supernatural powers, but not from God's kingdom, but from the satanic kingdom. Now magic comes in three different forms. Three different forms. The first form that you see that the occult, the occult and witches and warlocks uh, uh, practice is black magic. The first one is black magic. What is black magic? Black magic is performed to bring about uh, uh, destruction into people's life. It's to bring about harm, curses, hexes, vel uh, vexes, spells, incantations, ill-spoken words. Uh, all these things are what we consider to be black magic. Thank you for your prayer, our Brianna. Thank you. Uh, it's black magic. To God be the glory. And so that's what they do. Uh, incantation. And so these things are spoken against your life to destroy your destiny, to destroy your future, to destroy your family, your church, your region, your home. And there are spells, curses that are cast upon you so that you can be submerged in a place where you are now stuck. Your life is not going forward. Amen. So that they can come to kill, steal, and destroy your life. Uh, magic is to invoke uh, uh, evil spirits in the spiritual realm for negative purposes. And please bear with me. My arm is actually hurting from the fall. Amen. But here is the second kind of, of, of magic that they do. The second kind of magic that is performed is also... Um, it's also what we call, as I said, black magic. Oh, let me go into what they do with black magic. Black magic is, is what they do to, what witches and warlocks do to conduct rituals against your destiny, as I said. Uh, what they do is that they cast curse and spells. And they begin to join what we call a magic circle. Magic circle or a circle is drawn. And this is what they call a casting site. Casting site. And a, a, a pentacle is drawn inside the circle. It's what we call the devil's star. The devil's star. And inside that circle is called the circle of power. Please make note of that. When they draw that circle of power, 
Then they begin to light up herbs and, and, and crystals and charms and other materials, amen, against your life. And they begin to invoke evil spirits from within that circle of power, that magic circle. And they begin to enchant and begin to say things concerning your life. Are you hearing this teaching tonight? They literally try to put a curse over your region, your territory, your church, your life. And they begin to do incantations and spells. So literally, that your destiny can be locked up. Are you hearing me tonight? That's what they do in black magic. Now there's another kind of magic. is what we call white magic. White magic is what they consider to be selfless magic. Where it's supposed to be intended. God bless you, Apostle Rodney. God bless you. Where it's intended to do good. Where they are, uh, love spells are casted. Uh, maybe if you need blessings, they try to uh, do that. But all kinds of magic is detestable by God. Right? And so they begin to uh, do that for if you are in need of, 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 of wealth or marriage or open opportunity. Why am I bringing this up? Because as I said to you before, there are many people who have sold their souls to the devil in the marine kingdom and here you are thinking that most people that their power is from God's kingdom but because they operate as witches and priests pre high, high ranking priests and priestess you're calling them prophets so some of these people you're calling prophets but they're literally high ranking priests and priestess from the satanic realm and when you go to them they invoke curses and spells upon the people of God. And then you believe that these are supernatural manifestations in your life because now you're, they're praying for marriage and you saw the marriage. You prayed for breakthrough. They, you saw the breakthrough and you prayed for maybe open doors or job and opportunity and all that happened for you. And so here you are saying to yourself, this must be God. But really, it was white magic that was practiced against your life. And that still puts you under a curse. Then you have the third kind of uh, witchcraft, excuse me, which is gray magic. And gray magic is right in between. It's not one or the other or the extreme of both. It's between white magic and black magic, and that's called gray magic, which means that it, there, it's both is practiced. Black magic is practiced and white magic is practiced. So that's one form of uh, occultic practice. I just gave you three forms of magic. Uh, the last time I spoke to you about, um, I spoke to you about uh, 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 astral projection, so I won't get into that. But another form of it is called chiromancy. Chiromancy. It's not necromancy, it's chiromancy. This is a little bit different. Uh, this is where diviners use fortune telling, soothsaying, and the gift and the art of prophecy. So hear what I'm saying to you, beloved. This is the art of prophecy. It's called chiromancy. Chiromancy is the art of prophecy. It's a, div a form of divin uh, divination, foretelling. And so what they begin to do is use your hand. They use the lining of your hand to be able to determine your future. So why am I saying this? You've got to be careful who you, let, uh, who you allow to lay hands on you. Not only that, because they are infusing and imparting demonic spirits in you, but here you are, oftentimes, you go up on a prayer line. You don't know that half of these people are satanic priests and priestess. And then the first thing you do, you lift up your hands. And when you lift up your hands, I'm talking to you about hid hidden secrets and mysteries of the satanic kingdom. We're exposing this to tonight. They begin to read your palm. They read your palm. And as they read your palm, you're thinking you're getting prophecy, but it's really fortune telling. And so they connect their hands with your hands. 
And when your hand is connected with their hand, now you have allowed them access into your soul. Are you hearing me tonight? Whereby it gives them the ability to give you false pretentious prophecy. Which is why I'm saying to you tonight, friends, stop being a prophetic junkie. And a lot of churches have centered their teachings around prophecy. Look, I am a prophet myself. Prophet is myself. But listen, I love prophecy. I don't despise it. It is powerful. It is great. But all ministry, all your ministry should not be focused around that. It should be focused and geared towards the word of God. Are you hearing me tonight? So why are you thinking you're receiving prophecy? It's fortune telling. And diviners literally telling you your future. And here you are opening your spirit, receiving something into your spirit from a witch or a warlock. Here's the other thing that they, they do, another form of occultic practice. I hope you're receiving something tonight. Uh, the other thing is that they do, many people have been telling me, woman of God, People have been inboxing me, telling me things that they've been dreaming. They've been having dreams and they've been dreaming about animals, spirit animals. A lot of this is sourced from the satanic kingdom. Spirit animals. And they have been dreaming about spirit animals. And not only dreaming about it, but also is manifested in the natural realm. I'm teaching somebody tonight. And so... What begins to happen, I heard of one testimony where this one particular man began to share with me is that he had recently bought a home. When he bought the home, every time there would be dead crows in front of his house or crows flying into his house or his house was swarmed with bees or there was rats in his house. I want you to know that a lot of times high-ranking priests and priestess have the ability to do what we call shape-shifting. Shape-shifting. It's called shape-shifting. I'm not going to give you too much teaching tonight because I am planning to do a deliverance conference very soon that I do want you all to be a part of. Uh, shape-shifting. And with shape-shifting... Uh, what they begin to do is that a lot of these witches and warlocks have the ability to transform themselves into animals to spy out your liberty. And so a lot of times what you think that it's just animals or they maybe e even come in the form of flies, of flies and in your house. But these are familiar spirits, spirit guides. They're spirits that uh, uh, has come into your home by a priest, high-ranking priest and priestess that has the ability to transform their bodies into shape-shifting into animals. If you don't believe me, they also call this metamorphosis. They know how to metamorphosize themselves to spy out your liberty and bring it back into the realm of the spirit on how to destroy your life, how to destroy your home. There's another form of, of what there's three different forms of what these witches and warlocks do. The first one is astral projection. Many of you know about astral projection or what we also call astral projection or it's also called soul travel. Soul travel. So I just gave you three names. Astral projection, astral projection, soul travel. And this is where witches and warlocks, they have the ability to leave their body they have demon spirits occupying their body, leave their body, and travel to your home and spy out your liberty, uh, deposit evil things into your house, and things of that nature. That's what they do. These are all occultic practices. That's one. Number two, they do what we call, as I said, shape shifting and, uh, uh, or metamorphosis is when they know how to transform their bodies into animals to spy your liberty and monitor your life which we also call monitoring spirits, monitoring spirits. The other thing is what they do is called sending, sending. Are you guys receiving this tonight? Give me some hearts, thumbs up, some likes so I can know that you're receiving this tonight. Please guys, 
share part one and two. Part one and two. The first broadcasting and the second so people can get it in, in its entirety. The other one is called sending. This is where a lot of sorcerers uh, in many cultures, they send animals, birds, insects, uh, objects uh, to literally cast a curse and spell on you. And so that's what they call sending. They send animals with curses attached to it to destroy your life. Are you hearing me tonight? Those are three forms of how they soul travel to spy out your liberty and monitor your life. And so they do that to literally destroy you and kill you. But I need you to declare tonight, hallelujah, according to the word of God, I shall not die but live to declare the works of the almighty God. You shall not die. Your family shall not die. Your destiny shall not die. Your ministry shall not die. You shall not die but live to declare the word of the almighty God. Now, let me give you an example. I'm going to give you a, a more examples of, of occultic practices and how witches and warlocks and priests and shamans and different type of people can be mistaken for prophets. Please, hear what I'm saying to you tonight. They are five-fold ministry. According to Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says he gave some of... Uh, Apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. In the realm of the spirit, the devil operates the same way. And a lot of these fivefold ministry, ascension, gifting, and function can be mistaken for, for that, but not knowing that really these are uh, witches and warlocks in operation. So I want you to know that Romans chapter 11, 29 says that the gift of God is without repentance. So a lot of times, these people, are they gifted? Yes, they are. Fortune tellers, uh, pro, uh, psychics, all these, they're gifted. The gift of God is given to them, but they are without repentance, which means that the gift can be polluted. It can be contaminated and uh, 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 corrupted. God doesn't take it back. So it says, according to 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, for such as false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Which means that the devil has recruited and dispatched people that looks like apostles and prophets. My friends, will you hear me tonight? This is why you are not to eat at everybody's table. Perverted gifts, that's right. Perverted uh, ministries. Perversion. And no wonder why our, ministry, our life is going under attack because of the things you are listening to. So let me give you some people that can be mistaken as prophets when really they are witches and warlocks and high priestess. Number one are clairvoyant. Clairvoyant can be mistaken for prophet. A clairvoyant amen is pertaining to the ability of clear sightedness. Right? It refers to paranormal ability. They have the ability to see things in distance beyond they can transcend time and space right there's no distance they can transcend time and space it can also be divided into what we call precognition that's the ability to see someone's future that's the same thing prophets do they have the ability to see someone's future this is called precognition clairvoyance have that ability so here you are thinking that the prof these prophets are seeing into your future, but really it's precognition. Then we have called retrocognition, and that's the ability to see past events. So let me give you some example. Some of these individuals may prophesy to you, and they may say, 
Uh, but I'm not saying all of them are like this. Some of them are authentic prof uh, apostles and prophets, but you need discernment to know the difference. But they will say something like this. The Spirit of the Lord began to show me uh, into your life, and I'm going back to uh, your generation, which means that they can see retrogression, re uh, retrocognition into your past, and they can also see your future. So please be careful. A lot of times these are not prophets, okay? These are clairvoyant, see into your life. They see through what we call chakra. A chakra is the third eye. Some people call it the second vision, second eye. These are all occultic practices. The third eye. Again, be careful. A lot of times, these are not prophets. They are witches and warlocks that have sold their soul to the devil, to the marine kingdom that's in operation. Number two. Here's another one that can be mistaken for a prophet or an apostle. Are mediums. Mediums uses their psychic and intuitive uh, intuition and their ability to see again the present, past, and future events in a person's life by tuning into spiritual energies. They work with spiritual energies and vibrations. That's when they practice meditation. To be able to pick up the vibration of your life. Of what's around them. To be able to determine information into your past and present. Mediums are used as a link in between both worlds. In between the natural realm and the supernatural realm. They are used in both spheres. They are called mediums. They are like the go-between person. Then you also have what we call oracles and shamans. Shamans are also uh, like priests, priests and priestess. And the shamans give you false healing. Are you hearing me? So a lot of times you would think that you've received healing. But what they did is literally cast white magic or a spell on you to receive healing temporary healing so you can receive temporary healing and then you say well I have uh, received healing through the ministry of this prophet or this apostle and you receive healing for a short while but then the cycle comes back again because the thing with, with this is that